So you welcome. Know? Let's start. Mm -hmm. Maybe I see a few Sorry. more people zooming in. So just give them a few minutes to settle the sounds and stuff like that. Sure. That's great. Okay. I see a lot of uh, familiar faces. Hi, Seda. Hi, Martina. Hi, Seda. Hello, Seda. Hi. Hi, Seda. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Martina also? Oh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. I see you. You look great. You are shining, actually. Are you? Oh. <laughs> it is 14 degrees right now in Prizren. We are lucky. Amazing. Yeah, no. <laughs> From the snow to the sun. Yeah, I, I'm just happy to tell you that minus eight degrees is waiting for you here, Agur. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> in a couple of days, in a couple of days. So yeah. we still have time. <laughs> yeah, enjoy your time. Yes, I'll take some for you too. Please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, uh, good evening and good afternoon. Um, we will slowly uh, start. Thank you for joining in tonight. My name is uh, Biljana Ciric and I'm the founder of What Good Should Curating Do? Uh, I'm zooming in from Melbourne and I would like to acknowledge traditional custodians of the land that I'm on, Bunwurung and Urunjari people and pay my respect to their past, present and emerging. Um, as a part of the curatorial program that we are running remotely at the moment, we are organizing lecture series, something uh, that we used to do in Belgrade and now we're doing online. And um, I would like to just um, mention that we started in November and by now we had lectures uh, shared with you by Luca Lopinto, Susanna Milarska, Katarina de God and David Riff, Natasha Petreshin Bachelet and Lisa Rosendahl. And um, tonight uh, we are continuing um, a series with the um, walk uh, and we are honored to walk with uh, Joanna and Ovul who are currently in the prison and on a research trip to Autostrada Biennial that should actually happen, uh, that will happen in, in July uh, this year. As you will see, uh, the prison is a beautiful city, very close to my heart. Uh, in 2019, um, we had an amazing five days in prison in Pristina with uh, participants of the program, where we went to visit artists, institutions and understand the scene. And furthermore, one of our advisory members is running institution in prison, Lombardi Foundation, Aris Sporta. So I'm very happy that Joanna and Ovul are taking you through, through the walk and share your, um, their plans for a biennial. It is a very young um, biennial that start, I think this is the third edition. Exactly. Uh, and after the Balcone project, an initiative that um, Ovul and Johanna started in Berlin during the lockdown. Um, this is the, I guess, the next challenge to think and work within um, our current living conditions um, around the art. So, um, and the title of the tonight's uh, Walk is what is the use, needs, and means of making biennial under pandemic. Uh, and they will share their ideas and the ways of working that will unfold um, this year um, among what they call 
um, idea of biennial that is rooted locally that they call intimate infrastructure. Um, and I will uh, introduce Ovul. Uh, Ovul uh, Durnusoglu is a mentor and program co-leader in the Graduate School in University of Arts in Berlin and a visiting professor for Arts and Discourse in University of Arts in Brunswick. In her multi-phase practice as a curator, writer, and educator, she researches intersectional forms and narratives of contemporary political subjectivities. And she was one of the curators of uh, Sterische Herbst Festival in Graz. Um, she was a curator and director of Yama Public Screen in Istanbul. Artistic director of Sofia Contemporary 2013. Um, and she curated different programs for Istanbul biennials between 10, 13, and 14. And she yes, coordinated and organized different programs and events at maybe education and public programs for Documenta 13. Joanna Varsha is a program director of Curators Lab at Kunstwerk University of Arts in Stockholm and an independent curator interested in how art functions politically and socially outside of White Cube. She was the artistic director of public art in Munich in 2018, curator of Georgian Pavilion at the Venice Biennial, and head of public programs for Manifesta 10 in St. Petersburg, and associate curator of 7th Berlin Biennial, among many other projects. She's an editor of a number of publications, and I will just mention uh, lately she co-edited with Michelle Masucci and Maria Lind, Red Lava Reader on Alexandra Kolontai, published last year by Sternberg. Um, before I um, hand it over to Joanna and Ovul, I would like to thank um, our partners, uh, Kunshan Duke University in, in China for co-organizing this public lecture series with us and the Seek Out platform for co-streaming um, event. And I would like to thank to Autostrada Biennial team for his, uh, managing this um, on-site uh, technology uh, tonight with us. And just a um, bit of housekeeping, we will have a walk um, together for around half an hour, and then we will have a around half an hour for questions. Uh, and please type in your questions in if you are watching from Facebook or the uh, Zoom. And um, please uh, put, in your put in the chat uh, where are you Zooming from? It will be at least good to know um, where are you at the moment. Thank you very much for joining. And uh, Joanna Noble, hello. <laughs> Hello, hello, Viviana. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, for this invitation. That also will uh, will give us a chance uh, to uh, to for the first time publicly actually share our on-site uh, ideas uh, that we put at work uh, for Autostrada third edition of the Autostrada uh, Biennial. And I also would like to thank all the partners uh, that you're collaborating with for making this. Uh, uh, event possible, and I also would like to thank our uh, wonderful team member Boris Karamucho, who is behind the camera right now and uh, uh, making it possible for us to communicate with you. Uh, so yes, indeed, uh, here we are. Uh, we are in uh, we are in Prizren, uh, and Prizren is like the uh, second largest city uh, of the very young republic uh, of uh, Kosovo. Uh, and it is a quite a special city, a very multicultural uh, city where many languages and many cultures meet and meet actually for a really long time. This is almost like a living tradition uh, in uh, in Prizren. Uh, and uh, uh, and we are uh, very happy to collaborate with Autostrada Biennial, a grassroots organization uh, that uh, that actually grew from the desire to build the infrastructure artists need uh, in Kosovo uh, from three uh, artists uh, and uh, art educators uh, and uh, also like 
breaking the field a little bit and changing the rules of the, uh, the game uh, in Kosovo. Uh, and, and of course, like, uh, uh, as being in a town, speaking, uh, I said speaking many languages, and those uh, many languages involve also alongside Albanian, the Turkish language and the Slav, Slav oriented languages as well. Uh, alongside the Roma language uh, and the Bosnian language uh, and the Serbian also as well. So uh, we both have our really like different special uh, relations and different connections uh, to the town and context, which also makes our particular curatorial experience uh, different. And also it is different because of our interest, interest in reconnecting uh, with the local, understanding the questions of local that has been uh, there for us uh, for a long time to uh, learn and unlearn. So actually we divided this, this walk and talk in three parts. First, we'll introduce you a little bit to PRISERN because the, the cycle what should curating do, it's such a global cycle and we are so happy that we have an audience from Melbourne and Shanghai and even some people who got up at six in the morning in New York. And um, somehow, first, as we started a bit about prison, and then a bit larger scale about biennial and what should curating do with biennials, especially with biennials in times of pandemic. And at the end, we'll show or speak, actually, there will be like imaginary guided tour to three or four projects that we are actually planning in public space. So um, please bear with us in <laughs> imagining what, what will be here in July. And just to add about prison uh, from my side, I think it's so interesting. So geographically, this is Western uh, Balkans. However, one can say that this is uh, also Jerusalem of the West because uh, so many different cultures and religions merge here. And this, me coming from a very homogeneous country, which is Poland, it's an em em embodied place of, of multiculturalism, but also it's such an important and interesting place to uh, ask yourself, what is Eastern Europe? And how does Eastern Europe relate to all the post-colonial and decolonial debates because on one hand Kosovo um, was part of Yugoslavia uh, Yugoslavia was part of a non-alignment movement um, the country was rather the place was rather colonized that colonizer so somehow it shares this very strange this, 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 this dichotomy between uh, op oppressor and oppressed being uh, an ally with the colonial struggles and yet maybe also sharing some colonial mindset. So this is really interesting place, uh, even it's far from Eastern Europe where I come from, for me personally, uh, it's also such an important place to speak uh, about um, what is Europe, what is Eurocentrism, what is Westocentrism, and we'll come back to it later. Yes, maybe it's also important to add from my side, of course, it's uh, someone coming from Turkey in life speaking one of the like languages that really roots the, the culture here. It's also very interesting to see uh, some of the workings of the current Turkish government in terms of the neo-colonial acts. So this is a kind of an ongoing process on many different levels uh, for our audience. Um, so I'd right. like to inform. Yeah. So Autostrada Baeño somehow picked up this, uh, this wonderful city uh, for their location. And obviously this is a working ground and a resource for us to start to think from prison. Um, and, uh, and also because um, we are interested in, in infrastructure and there is not so much infrastructure for art in Kosovo, uh, there is no institution really of contemporary art. Here we are the only one, so our natural working ground is public, public sphere and public space. However, we hope we use this metaphor of half-built half house. Things are maybe unfinished, but we see it also not in only negative sense, we see it in the positive sense. We ask ourselves, how can art be a form of recovery? How can art be a form of finishing or entering in an intimate relation with infrastructure and, uh, and seeing what is a place of art? And as you ask in this panel, what curating can do actually in this situation? And then also uh, it is, uh, we also like uh, both believe that in art uh, in this context, when we are open to different uh, formats, uh, and when we are ready to actually like kind of leave uh, some of our very learned behaviors uh, behind, it also creates a really interesting environment 
to uh, see the everyday traps in very different ways and also to overcome them. Uh, and this is also, and uh, we also see this as an act of uh, deborderization for our own uh, subjectivities and our, uh, for our own also relationship with public, especially as you know, two curators, so very close, we are still coming from outside to interact and to uh, create uh, the, uh, the environment uh, for this edition of the biennial to happen. Right, I really like this metaphor of everyday traps. It helps things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think. Think along. Yes. Shall we walk a little bit and then uh, we see how it works with all the infrastructure behind? Hopefully you can see us fine. Be so slow. Yeah, yeah. Be slow. Maybe in the meantime, uh, I would also like to open up a little bit uh, what it mean, what it meant for us to use. Uh, what is the use? I'm sure uh, some of you are familiar uh, with the recent book uh, of Sarah Ahmed. Uh, what is the use? Uh, basically, on the uses of use. Uh, it's a really very interesting book. Uh, a very interesting discussion on the future of progressive institutions and the way they are uh, constructed. Uh, uh, so uh, Sarah Ahmed uh, created her whole discourse around the critique of uh, utilitarianism. Also that is very much about certain ways of use, uh, taking over the structures and taking over their intentions uh, and how they are also defining where certain bodies uh, should be how they should act, uh, and uh, and also um, uh, let's say um, uh, making it quite uh, superficial also for some of the deep conversations uh, to happen uh, that are actually the main goals uh, of these uh, institutions. Of course, uh, Amit discusses this uh, in the sphere of the university, but we both believe that in this can be really also um, taken, borrowed, uh, this can be borrowed uh, for our uh, ways of content production in contemporary art today, in the institutions, in the large scale uh, exhibitions, and, um, the, uh, and uh, to be able to use the moment of the pandemic of this, uh, opening of this challenge actually uh, to question the uses uh, of the biennial, to uses of the things that we are doing and what kind of uh, behaviors that we take for granted uh, and uh, make the use of the use more important than the first goal itself and how we can uh, undo a different uh, interaction and learning ground uh, for us all, not only for the public, but for all the makers uh, in order to discuss uh, equality, uh, diversity, uh, and inclusivity and exclusivity uh, in different means. So actually to, to speak about something very useful, the city has been constructed along this river. It's called Lombardi in Albanian and Vizbita in Serbian. And obviously water is a primary need. So we also thought of constructing the whole biennial along the river. We will start from Hydroelectrana, the hydro power plant that gave electricity and used the power of water to give the electricity. And then as we will walk down, uh, you will encounter different, uh, different artworks and we'll tell a little bit about uh, them. And uh, we will actually start with introducing to the work also about water. Let's yeah, yeah, maybe start from there. And while we are maybe slowly walking, that I would also introduce that the area uh, that we are in is the area of the Albanian League, uh, which is a very important historical place for the Albanian speaking communities uh, in, uh, in this part of the, the world, because uh, the Albanian League is the, the first place the independence of the Albanian community was uh, discussed and declared. So that's why prison also has a different kind of importance uh, for the community. So 
we'll start with Hera. Here. We'll start with Hera, yes. yes. Um, so uh, here uh, we hope that you can see it's one of the uh, one of the still um, a similar style remaining uh, streets from the old uh, town of uh, Prizren. And uh, what we are seeing here are uh, called potoks. Uh, potoks are the water channels that used to define the neighborhoods, the mahalles. Uh, in uh, the Ottoman time of uh, Prizren. Uh, I mean, from the very foundation, very first foundation of the city, um, the water, uh, Lombardi, Aktere, Bitritsa has been very like important for the town. The first uh, living, let's say, civilization sign has been, was constructed also alongside the river. Uh, and uh, potoks, these water, small water channels have been constructed uh, to define like the houses in relationship with each other uh, and on also to make different use of, to make a kind of public use of water. So we can say this is a kind of a, one of the first communal uh, examples like kind of, of, uh, of water use. Uh, and uh, these waters that you see here, like it was going through houses, people were using for their dishes and for like washing their clothes. And uh, they were trying to keep the waters uh, always clean uh, for that kind of a sign, as a sign of respect of community to the each community. other. Yeah, which is not the case today. And which is not the case today, uh, as you see also, as you see the state of the, uh, of this only remaining potok that uh, gives us actually a little bit of an idea how uh, prison was functioning uh, before. Uh, and uh, this actually like kind of very much speaks about how we would like uh, to, uh, to interact uh, with the city we are becoming part of uh, and, uh, and creating an intimate infrastructure uh, through the interests uh, and drives of the artists that we are inviting and through like the needs of the, the community, their questions, uh, their desires to actually overcome this everyday trap. So this is a, a burning question uh, for the town. The, uh, not only in terms of like the commoning, how commoning got disrupted, but also uh, there's a big question of heritage uh, that uh, that is like a kind of quite a heated debate here, um, and uh, that's how we decided uh, to invite um, uh, Herabü Tashian uh, from Istanbul, who is actually here today. She's our first uh, research artist coming coming from uh, outside Kosovo. Uh, like she's in Prizren with us. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, Hera is uh, especially has been. Uh, working around uh, like uh, the questions of heritage and how they are translated today in the everyday living and how uh, their mythologies can be sustained and can be uh, used for different kinds of imaginaries for making our lives better uh, today. And the question of water. Actually. And the question of water, of course, uh, sits very much uh, in, the, uh, in the center. Uh, so uh, at the moment she is also she's in town as I said um, researching uh, researching also the histories and the mythologies of water uh, of the river uh, in the in the city in Prizren uh, and also in conversation with our wonderful um, uh, expert uh, heritage expert uh, Nora Arapi who is part of our team and who uh, is also very active in Prizren for the heritage discussions and who knows the history of course of these structures very well uh, to develop a project uh, on the histories of the water channels and the, um, and how let's say the ancient ways of commoning may be inspiring for us to uh, to form updated forms of living. So actually coming back to this question what should curating do and also what should we do in the pandemic in the biennial in the place where there is not so much infrastructure we thought, um, we thought about two things. One is that I think we start to understand that there is approximately 300 biennials in the world. A lot of them 
you know, oh, sorry. Most of them come and go. And like, uh, work on the model of fly in and out. But actually, what we try to do is rather to refer, to rethink certain structures and to refer to what uh, political uh, scientist Oliver Marhart coins biennial of resistance. So if you look at the history of the biennial, of course, you have a Venetian model, which is a very top down, uh, colonial, uh, based on the world first idea model still very visible in the ecologies of the biennial, but you have a lot of other biennials coming from global south, which have introduced completely different thinking. So for example, if today discourse is important, if participation is important in the biennial culture, if um, thinking from the local, from the border, from the city as a resource is important, this was not introduced in the US. This has been introduced, this has been introduced in, for example, Havana Biennial in 1983. It was Havana Biennial that actually thought of herself as a peripheral biennial and didn't use West as an orientation point. It was part of decentralization of the West. So we look at the number of the biennials that have been crucial in this the westernization process and yet very important in the metaphor of the house which is half built we use this notion of the biennial resistance and think how in this ecology of 300 biennials in the world, actually Stephen Wright wrote once, you know, there are 300 biennials in the world. It means every week you could go to a different opening. What do you do with the rest of the time? <laughs> Maybe go to some museums. If you wanted to just spend your life seeing those, those bodies, those creatures of our times called biennials. But, it's important, what do they really, what is their agency? How do you use it, this agency also as a curator? And how do you translate it to the local context? And how do you, how can you participate in the process of the westernization when you speak from the ground? And um, that's, it's, that's, it's, that's why it's useful to, 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 to have this metaphor of, of biennial resistance and to think what can be a resistance here in this organization, really founded from the ground, from the small budget by free active artists, curators, educators, educators, educators speech therapists, and uh, think from the ground. And this is so, that's why when we, we managed to come here already in September, we met so many interesting people like um, Abul mentioned earlier, um, uh, the, the heritage expert, uh, the food expert, uh, a Roma activist, and we thought, why we don't just instead of you know, you know, why we don't just respond to their needs to their daily activity and kind of construct it in the manner of um, overlaying art art inviting itself to be part of the daily concerns daily traps daily ecologies of actually who is working here on the ground that that was our intuition how can we build on this biennial of resistance also in the pandemic also in the situation that we don't know how many artists will be able to come here but can we create some kind of alliances, some kind of um, situations of a host and guests? We are guests of our free artist organizers. We work together and other artists become guests of people working here on a daily basis. And hopefully their passage will also leave some trace in, in these half builded houses. Um, maybe it's also important uh, to add I mean, uh, from the very moment, uh, Autostrada Biennial uh, it defines itself somewhere it's standing in between um, Venice, Biennial of Venice uh, and Istanbul Biennial because Prison also has been one of the important trade cities that is in equal uh, distance to Istanbul and, and Venice. And we also find it very interesting in terms of like the, the Biennial uh, format uh, and the needs and desires how you know it shows in in Venice and Istanbul uh, differently at the same time. And of course, as uh, as someone who grew up with Istanbul Biennial, who probably has become a curator because of Istanbul Biennial, uh, I would say that there is a very important uh, structural educational uh, role in contexts as such where there are no real institutions uh, of uh, contemporary art or where there is a huge instability, uh, where these biennials of resistance 
can come in to really pave the ground for other kind of discourses to arrive and to uh, really move uh, further. Uh, so we really also see Autostrada Biennial's position in between Venice and Istanbul uh, as such as uh, a model of uh, resistance in this way. Right, neither Venice nor Istanbul. Neither <laughs> Venice nor Istanbul, exactly. Yeah, and another thing uh, to share also in, in this preparation open process is um, the concept of art as recovery. And this is something we started to think about uh, when we did the project Di Balcone this spring. It was during the current pandemic, but it was in April when the, the first quarantine hit changed our lives. And we, we did a project which was an invitation to our neighbors, um, artists, neighbors uh, and cultural workers uh, who live uh, like us in Berlin in the district of, of Prenzlauerberg. Uh, to exhibit something, to exhibit signs of life in the windows and balconies. And of course, the uh, self-made uh, impulse came from the fact that in the pandemic, the main discussion, of course, and rightfully so, is about those who are the most essential workers and those who save lives, uh, those who are there in the hospitals and working on the front line and, and putting their lives at risk also. But uh, you ask yourself also, what is the role of art in those times? And where can art help in or how can it be present? Can it actually become what we very often read in curatorial statement? How much art is a form of overcoming isolation, creating bonds, creating community? Somehow now, out of the sudden, those questions sound real. So that's also what brought us here. We, we, start, we also want to share this question. Can art be a form of recovery? Of course, in this part of, of the world, post-war, uh, it's a big question. What is a recovery? But Where the war is still here. It's post-war, but it's still here. It's present. So how, um, how, in which form, in the soft manner, uh, can art become a form of recovery? And for example, one other project that we would like to speak about um, is by Adona Kriziu, who is a Kosovan artist living in um, Berlin, Berlin now, Berlin yes, at the moment. but grew up in Germany as a part of diaspora. It's important to say for those who don't know, majority of Kosovans are outside of Kosovo. Diaspora is bigger than people who live here for mostly, I mean, for many reasons. Uh, one of them, of course, economical reason war, uh, displacement, and um, the stability of government, poverty, um, also working force for Western Europe, obviously. Obviously. So Adona uh, once discovered in her shelf an old v VHS videotape, um, which was a channel of communication between the Kosovan diaspora, in her case in Sweden, but also in other countries, and people who stayed behind uh, on the ground, people who used to send to each other videotapes um, with greetings, uh, films of birthdays, of weddings, of songs. Dances. songs. And um, Adona is making an open call. And actually, if some of you, the Kasovan diaspora, are listening to it in Australia or China, <laughs> please uh, check if you might have some VH videotapes uh, to to share a material which would form kind of a personal archive of this moment of the 90s, which would also become an infrastructure. And, and um, today we are full of questions about how archives are misleading. So this is a soft infrastructure proposal from her. How can we document uh, before those tapes completely bleach out and are not readable anymore? How can we document this exchange between diaspora and people on the ground uh, for, for a project so this is an ongoing project we, she plans to do kind of a portrait, common portrait um, of Kosovan diaspora and the project is called Greetings from an Elsewhere. So also greetings to you watching people from elsewhere. <laughs> Please send us. Yeah, and no, hopefully uh, we would like you, we would like to spread this call. This be, uh, also, this is the first project call that we had made and uh, we are, uh, uh, we find it like very, very important uh, to create this this bond and also for this archival research to grow and to find uh, also different means and uh, uh, and no need to say Edona 
uh, really uh, with her uh, clarity and her sharpness and an enthusiasm, uh, she touched us from the very first moment that we met and we are really very happy uh, to be in conversation. And, uh, and while during our walk, we also you know, would like to uh, share with you some of the sites that, uh, that really inspire us, that uh, make us keep the thinking and also kind of feeling and also with, uh, with public space. Uh, with the different questions of public sphere and where public and private like collapse into each other and how different layers of uh, layers of memories uh, exist all at the all at the same time and this is like one of the maybe the most impressive uh, spots in prison uh, where we where we really uh, see it uh, behind behind me is just an, an excavation site that comes uh, from like the, the Roman times. Uh, and you kind of see the state uh, that it is in, like because of like the indecision between different agencies in the city. So it's uh, still, they uh, haven't decided how to continue with this excavation in the middle of the city. Uh, but there is also a wrong side, this, um, uh, this site with a lot of, let's say, questions in the way that it's in is a circular structure that you see in the background, uh, which used to be the uh, platform, the base of uh, one of the anti-fascist uh, monuments uh, that uh, existed here. Uh, and actually like this monument, uh, as far as we shared also the different with uh, our friends and collaborators here, uh, we learned that uh, it was a kind of a uh, this sculpture like experienced a gradual destruction every day, uh, even before the war, uh, uh, even before the war, uh, and then finally it was completely taken um, off, uh, and uh, all of these different and birds that is kind of touching this, yes, of course, uh, a non-alignment movement and also the position of Yugoslavia in non-alignment movement as well. Uh, and nope. nobody really said anything so far, or it's, but uh, we, we are also informed by our colleagues that there is a very important discussion going on about the fate of such monuments and what happens also with other kinds of monuments in public spaces of Kosovo. And of course, you know, the question that, that, her, that has been an iconoclastic gesture towards this place, we see today a lot of monuments falling for good reasons. What if a monument which is anti-fascist falls down and there are other monuments erected to completely other ideas. Where do we stand? What is our responsibility towards this, this monuments or towards people and, and our public sphere as curators? This, those are very pertinent questions for us. And, and we work on them, of course, only with people from here. It's, yeah. it's, it's not something you can bring from outside. You can try, and that's very important actually for biennials general, and especially for this biennials of resistance to find an equal, symmetrical, not asymmetrical relation between the, the needs, the voices, the concerns on the ground and somehow our position from, from outside and, mm -hmm. and work on it collectively. That's, that's something we are also very concerned with. And maybe I will add something about Nuria now. Uh, yeah, 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 maybe, maybe we have good, three, four minutes. Yeah, it's a good point like, to add, the, add Nuria. But maybe we can also say in the meantime that of course one of our lacks in Trisran is that this is a very close community uh, and uh, we, everybody, like everybody is connected to each other in particular, like kind of ways in the city structures. So we can find a lot of like answers that they're asking in a very fast way. And that makes also our uh, ground grassroots work uh, possible, which is also a really uh, pleasant and a teaching experience uh, for us uh, as curators. Right, yeah, two more projects we would uh, mention briefly. One, because Autostrada is of course a metaphor of the road. So you ask yourself, for example, what is a highway between here where so many guest workers come from to Germany? How, how does that connect Kosovo with, let's say, Northern Kostara yeah. in West Germany? Or Switzerland. And, or Switzerland. Or how does how the connection of two sides of the road in European uh, continent function? 
and uh, some years ago in 2013, uh, I worked with Nuri as well in uh, Spanish artists in uh, Gettenborg Biennial in Sweden, where we started a, a wonderful collaboration with the former police worker from Kosovo who was asking for an asylum in Sweden. And she had been denied several times an asylum. And what Moria proposed was for her to and play. And she's been living underground because of that. Also, also. Yeah. and uh, Moria proposed for her to play a hide and seek game with the visitors of the Bayan. And of course, today, looking at this very powerful project, some critical questions come also. How was this difference played out? Uh, you know, how do these two ends of the road touch? What does that mean for such a site specific project in the north, in Sweden, to actually come to where the main protagonist of this project is coming from? So, um, I will also work with Nuria, and we are very glad to revisit and to make another itineration at the other end of the road, so to say, yes. and to work with Maria, who was a police officer in. Kosovo, maybe somewhere near a police station here. Maybe, this maybe, who knows, who knows, yeah. Uh, maybe something about Flaka? Um, sure, sure, maybe we can uh, speak about Flaka, but uh, have you already mentioned about um, our uh, sunflower? Oh, we forget about, we forget about, about maybe it. it's, uh, okay, mention this and Maybe it's important like, to say it's like, um, maybe we stop just very shortly, like over here uh, by the river. And, and so we would also would like to show you a little bit like the, how the river cuts uh, through the town uh, because the river is not only the source of life, um, the beginning of life in the city of Prism, but it's also a backbone for us, for our exhibition and in the way our, we understand our position also in the city and in the context of Kosovo. But uh, we also would like to, you know, uh, take attention back to the river. Um, uh, also, like make the river part of the current imaginary of town um, as well. So we have we are inviting also different uh, projects uh, to really enable us that. And one of them uh, is uh, one of actually like a very we are very honored uh, to be hosting a legendary uh, artistic gesture uh, by very like an early ecological uh, work uh, by Agnes Dennis uh, and um, uh, the uh, the the Hungarian song, US, so Hungarian, uh, US um, artist also still living in uh, New York she also has been part of uh, documenta uh, 14 but you know that she has been also very much inspiring for a lot of our colleagues at the moment. And, um, long story short, one of the gestures that we would like to realize in Prizren is actually to bring her sunflowers gestures in the river embankment uh, of, uh, of Lombard. Uh, and planting sunflowers that would also, let's say, start probably before the biennial and will continue also afterwards uh, as a gesture to actually how to think of these existing spaces uh, in our everyday living uh, and also to question our ways of uh, consuming them and um, our, they say, devising different ways of living side by side uh, and enjoying them. And for us also for them to enjoy our presence in different ways as well, the different relationship between the human and non-human. So, right. I uh, think now, the first like now. is uh, uh, actually my long term Kosovan collaborator, a contact, and a friend. And uh, while we have collaborated on public arts Munich uh, together, and uh, one of her long uh, projects is actually dealing also with infrastructure and with the way of demilitarization and the colonization of objects. And how can artists? take part in this peacemaking demilitarization process. Flaka has been uh, for a number of years collecting objects that come from former military bases and camps of four Kosovo UN forces and giving them another purpose. She constructs a series of robots in reverse. 
so the, 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 the form of the theories has been constructed first in Kosovo, then two of them were constructed in different contexts, also shown in Hamburger Bahnhof. And um, one of our values, actually, and related to Autostrada Bayernia, will be um, a former German military base here in, in prison, a little bit out of the center, uh, where the last robot will come to life exactly in the place where ideologically and infrastructurally uh, it is linked for. So we are also very honored to, to find this home <laughs> for a robot and produce it yeah, from there. Um, two last things, Lombardy and then we go I think we are almost right yeah. now. It's 45 past at the moment. Yeah, we, so um, we started a bit later. So just one thing. Yeah, OK, great. Just to mark the time. Maybe yeah. Uh, you may understand a little bit like from the background noises that we are in the very center of the town right now. It's a very busy moment because it's a very nice day. Uh, and a lot of people like all of are uh, outside. Uh, unfortunately, like the everyday regulations around COVID-19 is a little bit, a little bit weaker uh, than they should be. Uh, but we are doing our best uh, to protect uh, ourselves and our uh, working team at the same time. Uh, and uh, maybe here it would be like a, another, another inspiring site for us uh, in the center uh, of prison is the uh, Lombardi, uh, Lombardi Cinema which also has been uh, the site for like, one of the largest civic actions uh, to protect, let's say, the, uh, to protect the modern, modernist heritage uh, of Prizren, uh, to, keep, to keep it alive. Uh, and Lombardi Cinema is also right now is one of the uh, really uh, important institutions here, keeping the cultural life in uh, Prizren uh, and also engaged in different like uh, festivals and events, uh, but also uh, engaged in a very important archival project by our uh, uh, dear uh, friend, comrade, collaborator, Sezgin Boynik, who is uh, working on the roots of uh, roots of nationalism, especially in the uh, in the oh, in the Prizreni, in the Macedonian uh, Albanian uh, community. Uh, in the, especially during the, the Yugoslav times, the construction of uh, Turkish nationalism, the construction of the language, uh, and they are going to some really very important magazines and archives that haven't been spoken for the first time, uh, that haven't been spoken at all, uh, because uh, these kind of issues, actually very recent issues, uh, are not really like kind of discussed, and we hope also uh, with our collaboration at Sezgin and Sezgin's collaborators, uh, Tefik, uh, to enable actually uh, this discussion ground also as part of uh, the Autostrada Biennial. like maybe the questions it's better to take them in like kind of a silent uh, uh, space and also if you have any questions let's say in the meantime uh, please like feel free to uh, feel free to address uh, this is like the blue bridge uh, of prison it is also 
you could really see a little bit like the river and its embankments uh, the frontier. Uh, and actually like very close by is um, also the, the Filigrani uh, workshop and atelier that we are also going to collaborate together uh, for uh, the work of Camila Roja. Uh, and Filigrani is also one of the uh, very important local um, handicraft traditions in in prison that Prisrenis are very proud of and uh, we are very excited actually to involve uh, other imaginaries of botanics and flora uh, into the filigrane in our collaboration uh, with uh, Sao Paulo based Camila Roja. And, uh, Last thing coming back to what we were talking at the beginning and your question is that when we have met um, a lot of students who have been able to see a bit here, also a couple of days ago in Tirana, sometimes you have an experience, a feeling of the art that really works, you know, it's not sometimes like you are a shrink and you're listening to so many stories coming, fantastic stories coming from, from artists a couple of hours. And those recurring questions that Europe is somewhere else than here. You know, Europe, there were artworks which mm. mark the border of Europe. And of course, Kosovo is the only country that needs still visas to go to Europe. So it's a physical border, but somehow it's also a mental border. Because when you look at the geographical map of Europe, we are in the middle of it. So actually, one of the questions would be, isn't it also a form of, you know, self-colonization, is it needed to actually think of yourself as Europe, be part of Europe and overcome this feeling of, of uh, this term that we uh, encounter very often of Eurocentrism. Yeah. As if Eurocentrism, Eurocentrism is far beyond Western people and the from Britain. Yeah. Also one of our questions, questions like it's long-term long-term questions also it's not a question that can be of course resolved in the uh, in a short period but we'd like to also open this new uh, into discussion uh, because it also is actually like kind of a, something that we were meant to say in the beginning uh, and it would be really also like kind of good to add as one of the youngest republics in Europe. Uh, also, uh, Kosovo has one of the most progressive uh, constitutions. Uh, it's the freshest, with freshest approach and like with also uh, realized with, uh, according to the uh, most important sensitivities um, of today. And it is also quite important uh, to work like the real life laws to these more abstract, let's say, grounds, like the civic imagination of justice and connect it with the everyday imagination of justice while we are discussing uh, where Europe begins, how it ends, and how we can actually, how it's manifested, how it's manifested and how, it's, how it manipulates itself into these conversations. Just two small things we saw in the road. DocuFest, we forgot to mention. Actually, Prison is also a home to important film festival. DocuFest, maybe some of you know, uh, know it from. And I guess in terms of building cultural infrastructure, definitely an important partner. And also, it's nice to pass by and meet some artists on the road. It makes you feel. It belongs to the city. How are you? Salam. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the work. So maybe while uh, Obul and Joanna are entering the cafe, um, if you have any questions, maybe please just uh, type in into the chat of the Zoom or in the Facebook where we co-stream. We are inside safety now. Anytime we are ready. <laughs> Yes, of course. 
maybe maybe yeah, that's better. maybe we can ask like close the music that would be easier for us it's it's, it's okay <laughs> Take over. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Do I have Yes, i uh, Okay. okay. Uh, will, will, will they turn off the music? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we do have a few questions from um, Anna Michaela. Hello, Anna. Um, so, what does the local art community look like? Are there any more local organizations beyond Elster Strada? We've seen one, Lombardi and DocuFest. Um, and how do you think? Will you collaborate with them? And how do you think about this? Uh, well, um, we have already like, uh, yes, it's uh, uh, maybe important also like to mark uh, the other, uh, let's say, corners of the frame uh, in, uh, in Kosovo in terms, of, in terms of the art scene. I uh, mean, of course, uh, uh, generally, uh, it, our, our scene is more familiar with, with the scene in Pristina because Pristina is more considered as a center uh, for uh, contemporary art and also uh, has an important national art gallery where a lot of uh, crucial exhibitions uh, take place. There is also uh, the organization Station that has been active for many years, again, in, uh, in the old uh, Pristina. Uh, and there's also currently a young art gallery, Lambda Lambda Lambda, uh, who are also they are representing some of uh, Kosovar um, uh, artists. Uh, and then, of course, like the thing at the moment that's happening in Kosovo is uh, is the existence of Manifesta. So Manifesta is uh, uh, coming in uh, slowly uh, as. Um, uh, I would say as fast as the current uh, political social conditions uh, of pandemic uh, allow uh, to work uh, in Pristina uh, as one of like the uh, one of the actors, let's say one of the new actors in the scene and working with uh, the city directly and working uh, with some of the um, uh, important, let's say, protagonists uh, of the uh, of the cultural uh, scene. Uh, but of course, uh, we know that uh, from our conversations uh, with uh, with the cultural sector of the Christian mun municipality, that there are of course bigger dreams of uh, creating a large scale, long term uh, contemporary art uh, organization. And uh, since this is a, a also like a small scene, and things really very much uh, work in conversation and collaboration with each other, we are also. Uh, listening and hearing those concerns and trying to answer some of the questions that we can answer uh, from our uh, own uh, positions. So some of the conversations are, of course, directly taking place in the space of the biennial, uh, but there are also some of the more outside and who are uh, also long term. And that's also how we would like to work uh, in Kosovo. We don't, uh, we don't really imagine the biennial as such to be like a short term gesture like an exhibition coming and going into two or three months, but really leaving important gestures and questions uh, for the scene uh, to uh, continue the conversation and to also like take things uh, also further in the necessary paths that need to be taken. Maybe just to add to it, I guess Anna Michaela is uh, my student, so thank you for watching. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am, uh, as you know uh, from our also research this year at Curator Lab, uh, well, if you claim social engaged art, as, as we do, I guess, if we put ourselves in this lineage, of course, this art cannot exist on its own. It can only exist as a kind of a snowball effect. And that's why what we propose, what we try to and briefly explain, also comes from first conversations we had with people on the ground, with they, uh, their wishes, their everyday traps, yes. their desires, 
and it's a form of a conversation. They say one thing, we respond to this, and this is how it's being built. And hopefully, this is how this a metaphor of half built house can be added, expanded in more intimate and, and, and personal way. And uh, we, of course, very much hope that this exhibition is just one step in many for building infrastructure. Uh, and I'm not saying like Western infrastructure, mm -hmm. but different forms of self. The termination of our yes, self empowerment. But comes from the ground because it's a different ground that's not that cannot be neutralized or hygienized under the term. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I will ask uh, a question while we're waiting for other people to type in. I, um, I've seen briefly that you went to Albania, um, Tirana, for, for a research a few days ago. So I'm just wondering. Uh, having the, uh, since you started working on the uh, biennial, whether you had the chance to do um, further research into the region beyond uh, Kosovo and Albania? Yeah. Well, uh, I guess this is also part of making biennials in the pandemic, um, not uh, being able to travel, but not seeing it only as a negative thing but locating it maybe more here and making our relations with people with whom, with whom we have already worked, most of them, for a longer time. So in that um, case, we don't follow this model of, you know, traveling and shopping around. But we, <laughs> um, we of course, have been to, to Macedonia, North Macedonia, Serbia, Croatia, and Slovenia, in other occasions, so uh, luckily, Greece, of course, Greece, yeah. So, luckily, we, we do have uh, connections and we do work with people also from that region, and it's very important for us to read this region. But we really specifically try to, to see it and speak from yeah. Okay. Uh, And I we believe that this is a very also important moment, yeah. and how those, uh, yeah. you know, what those researches, what those kind of researches mean, what those connections mean. Uh, also today, you know, from today's perspective, mm -hmm. and how we can extend and build on conversations, because as we were saying, we were talking, let's say, talking about like the concept of the use and like uh, in the beginning uh, of our walk, this is also very much of the attitude of the consumption, like the consumption is also coming from, let's say, the curatorial side, consuming the artwork, consuming the position, consuming the context. Uh, so. It is not only we believe like the, the, infra, in the infrastructure that we are building, it is not only about, uh, let's say, uh, looking at like the outside elements, but the internal elements inside like the, the forms that we are working uh, and, and also like to really um, understand those ecologies in different ways and to see uh, what they mean and how they uh, function today rather than uh, finishing them off in one exhibition in, or in one context or in like kind of one fleshy gesture. What do these long-term conversations mean? Because uh, we are, I mean, yes, we are also pandemic, but we are also uh, in a very critical time where we really need to stay like the position of art and culture in the, in the life necessity agenda uh, and where we are seeing also a lot of different political movements uh, are moving against it. Uh, so it is actually like ourselves also with that we need to really create and establish this healthy uh, ecologies and environments in order to really create a resilient uh, working environment that would really be an example also in this kind of long term uh, struggle. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Agreen, do we have any other questions on the Facebook, maybe? I hope you could not, see something. Not yet. Sorry? Not okay, yet. Great. Sorry. It's better <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, bye. <laughs> we thought that you would be tired of seeing us like uh, <laughs> during the walk. When? Yeah, I think it uh, went really well. Uh, I think we were losing a bit Joanna from time to time, but I think it was, yeah, it was really good. I mean, it's, it's really great to hear. And 
again, Bianca, thank you for uh, you know being open to this experimentation because we found yeah, so absolutely that we are working together. That is the thing that made more sense and close to the heart, uh, you know, of how we function uh, in Kosovo at the moment. So absolutely. Yeah. And I sorry, I think I have a Christoph waving. Uh, is it you? Do, do you have a question, Christoph? Maybe. No, I was just waving. Ah. Ah, oh, <laughs> I <hi>. will. Hello. <laughs> Christoph is participating in our program this year. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Long Wait. time no see. Lovely to see you. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, no, actually, it's been too we long. Thought, you know, we thought that um, this form uh, will be also um, kind of, you know, using the possibility that Zoom has given us under the pandemic that now we are so globally connected and yet so much in the domestic sphere. So was also a proposal to leave our screen in the hotel here and like see see where we are and where we pro work from at the moment. So hope hopefully you could you could see it well. And I also we find it also another thing importantly of course these are not the places that are very well known or like like uh, always quoted uh, locations in the planet. So it is also necessary to talk about them uh, visually uh, to show like uh, the scenery or what the environment or the people or you know how and um, how a one o'clock moment works in the city of prison on a Friday afternoon. Uh, you know, to be able to um, mark these important nourishing uh, locations for uh, for our discourse, for our plurivocal discourse. Thank you, absolutely. Um, I think it's absolutely important. Um, but thank you for your time. I think maybe we should leave you to have a coffee in the cafe. <laughs> thank you. Um, wish you, uh, you uh, all the best. For us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and wish you all the best with the, with the further research and uh, preparation for the biennial and keep us in loop. I hope we can actually physically see it. Hopefully, hopefully, it will be wonderful to see you physically there. Yeah, hopefully. but digital audience is also fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in touch. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you, Diana. Thank you, and thank for you joining. for enabling, um, enabling the networks of communication again. Right. Yeah. And thank you, Aigarim, for, uh, for the all great work. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.